Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Welcome back to our series on heart failure. In our previous sketch, you learned all about the clinical features of chronic heart failure. In this sketch, we'll review what to do about it. So let's leave the land of mermaids and mermen behind, head up to the surface, and check in with this human love story as these young lovers celebrate their matrimony southern style, while floating down Old Man River. Here's to the bride and groom, and here's to hoping all this heartbreak drama doesn't wreck their special day. Anywho, before we jump into the plan, let's recap the clinical presentation of heart failure with our sample assessment from part one. Mr. Clemens is a 64-year-old obese man with hypertension and diabetes, presenting with three months of worsening dyspnea on exertion and progressive lower extremity edema. He now has shortness of breath walking around the house, but does not have symptoms at rest. Physical exam is notable for pitting edema of the lower extremities, elevated JVP, and an S3 gallop. Labs are significant for a BMP of 470. Chest X-ray is significant for cardiomegaly and pulmonary edema. TTE reveals LV hypertrophy, severe LV diastolic dysfunction, and an EF of 55%. These findings are most consistent with NIHA class 3 heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Great! Now that you're familiar with the clinical presentation of chronic heart failure, let's dive into what you can do about it. Here on the Mississippi, and uh, everywhere else, heart failure is represented by our recurring sketchy symbol, the floppy heart balloon. As you might remember from our last sketch, Heart failure can be divided into two major pathophysiologic categories. Heart failure with reduced ejection fraction and heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. This distinction is super important since many therapies that are effective in treating heart failure with reduced ejection fraction aren't necessarily effective for heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Before you start prescribing drugs and devices, however, the first step is to appropriately stage your patient. By that I mean using the American College of Cardiology Foundation and American Heart Association's Heart Failure Staging System, which categorizes patients based on their history, exam findings, and echo results. Hence the American flag flying triumphantly from the top deck of this riverboat. Riverboats and weddings. <laughs> this is Merca.